synagogue dates to before the destruction of the second temple. So they have a representation of what they would see in the temple on this stone, on the Dima. That's why it's it's so important. It's just the petals that are coming. It's the one on, around too. Represents the 12 tribes of Israel. What you're looking at would have been the covering veil that goes into, the, that separates the holy from the most holy in the tabernacle. The meeting between man and God, Elijah being taken away as the most holy. So they have the fire and they have the wheels of the chariot. We're seeing is the synagogue, but this is a side entrance to the synagogue. The main entrance, the front entrance was over there. And you see a chamber over here that was dedicated to the study of the Torah. So they would have the prayers over there and the worship over there. And over here was where they would study the, the Torah and they would do it uh, with um, a, a verbal tradition. They would memorize, they would chant and memorize the text. That's the way they would study and they would learn. And only men were allowed in here. In, in the year 67, the people of Mandala were forced to, to leave the city. And in the year 300, there was a major earthquake. That's why you see a lot of the deformations in the ground. And, but this was, uh, it wasn't from the Byzantine era. There's not, none of the Byzantine uh, mosaics and uh, the columns that we have found, that we've seen in other places that we visited so far this morning. This is strictly a first century synagogue. By, by standards, and there's three rows of seating as you can see this outer row and all the stones are actually where they, they would sit so you could hit, sit 150 people in the synagogue adult men archaeologists discovered that when they were looking at this for the formation that you see there represents eternity it's like a maze you go in there and you can't get out it goes on and on and on so it represents eternity and archaeologists are puzzled they don't know if uh, they didn't finish building the rest of the floor because this was the only side that has this or if they only intended to build just this side of the synagogue. They always talk about the treasury depositing into the treasury of the synagogue. They found about 300 coins here. That one that she has, that she's passing around is dated the year 28. And of all the 300 coins they found, uh, all were dated from the year 5 to the year, up to the year 60. There, there was no coins after the year 60. That's one of the ways they date the coins. The, the coins have the years on them. So they didn't find any coins past the year 60. It's for Magdala. And uh, these three uh, cavities that you see here, it's thought to be that either they filled them with live fish so they could sell live fish to the people to go take home and, and cook. And there's also a theory because five historians have, have said that um, at, they would export the fish to Rome. This is that the emperor at his table would eat the best fish from Magdala. So they would process them with salt here. So it's believed it's either those two owls that they would dig to keep, to have the water so that they could keep the fish alive. Mm -hmm. wow. Would go through here. This is where all yeah. the, the water would it come and it would keep the fish alive. Mm -hmm. Wow. Like the, the channels were messed up, so the water, when it rains, all of this floods. But that, that what you're seeing there is actual spring water that comes down from that mountain. Wow. Mm -hmm. So you can drink it. In case if you had cuts, a scab, anything like that, rashes, you weren't allowed to go past that. So you have to be out, outwardly clean and then you would come to this room where you would have prayers. Then you would go to the other chambers for for the rest of the purification with the water. And they had certain prayers that they would recite there. And you would have to go down the ladders descending with the prayers until you were in the water. And after you came out, you would go to the chamber that we're going to go see right now. After the purification bath, and you see the same floor, the same design that we found in the synagogue that represents eternity. And they would have prayers that they would chant. They wouldn't dry themselves off. They had to. They they would be reciting the Torah, all the verses and stuff they had learned, until they were completely dried, and then they would put on their clothes. They were mostly one-bedroom houses. The entire family would sleep together. They would actually cook outside. They wouldn't cook inside the house.
So mm. they would sleep inside. That was a house. All their labor and stuff was outside. Uh, they would cook outside. So each room that you see is a house. One, two, three. An interesting uh, fact is that in Israel, they only allow two months of excavation and it's only during the summer. And when they, because most of this place hasn't been excavated yet. Mm -hmm. So when they do that, uh, 2,000 archaeologists will come and they'll be excavating for two months here. 2,000. Oh. Okay. So a significance of that name, Dukinalto, is you know where Jesus asked him to go and cast the, net uh, the nets in the water. This, this room is dedicated to women. Why? This. Yeah. So, if, if you notice, this church is in the, the shape of a ship. And the columns are the. And then you have this uh, ship in the front that's actually about the size of the ship that they would use in Jesus. And if you look at all the, the disciples' names, they're all written in gold, except Judas's name. And if you notice all the disciples, they're looking toward, towards the front. And Judas is seen as looking down. And uh, he's holding the money back. They all have a scroll in their hands except for Judas. And the scroll represents the Word of God. They all carry the Word of God uh, except Judas. Representation found in Matthew chapter 14, verse 30, of where Jesus is walking in the water and then uh, Peter walks in the water as well. But when he's walking, he, when, when Peter's is Jesus, if it's, if it's you, Lord, and uh, command that I go out to you and when he starts walking he, he made uh, while he kept his eyes on Jesus he was able to walk on water but as soon as he takes his eyes off of Jesus starts looking at the size of the waves and everything and the water and the wind and he gets scared he starts sinking and he cries out save me and that's where Jesus uh, stretches out his hand and, and grabs him takes him up walks to the boat with him and then reviews him and says oh Oh, ye of little faith, why did you doubt? Okay, so uh, during Jesus' times, when there was massive crowds that followed him because of his miracles of healing and all that. So you see this painting over here, and the artist is trying to commemorate the event when one day he lands after crossing the sea, and the, 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 the prince of the synagogue, Jairus, was there and petitioned for him to come and heal his daughter who was very sick. She was dying. And on the way over there, there's a big crowd that's pressing up against him. And there was a woman who had, uh, uh, hem had been hemorrhaging for 12 years. And if you remember what we just talked about, the purification rites over there with the water, uh, every time a woman was in touch with blood in her menstrual cycle, she was considered unclean, ceremonially, ceremonially. So this woman had been unclean for 12 years. So when she sees Jesus, she's heard of Jesus, she out, stretches out her arm when he's on the way to, to Jairus' house. And she said, if I would only touch the fringe of his garment. So he didn't want to touch her, uh, touch him because she was ceremonially impure. And maybe she didn't even have the courage to ask for it. It was kind of an embarrassing affliction. She had spent all of her fortune. It says that she walked about 40 kilometers from where she lived to, to, to where Jesus was. To, to get that healing and Jesus turns around at the moment that that uh, he feels the power go out of him and heal her and he, and he says who touched me and then the disciples are like hey there's a bunch of people who, you know, who touched you and then he says well I felt power come out of me and then the woman confesses and he says your faith has made your heart and, and so she was saying that you know there's a lot of miracles that were done in this place a lot of healings a lot of miracles of healings that Jesus performed. Maybe we uh, have somebody that we have in our hearts from back home that we can pray for for healing.